hey going just still thinking of some these things that are happening gonna share some stuff the Australian sedition law was an area of criminal law of Australia relating to the crime of sedition Effectively defunct for nearly half a century, these laws returned to public notice in 2005 when charges were introduced with the bill announced by PM Johnny Howard prior to the summit of the Council of Australian Governments on 27th of September. The bill was introduced on the 3rd of November and passed into law on 6th of December 2005 after government amendments adding some protection for the reporting of news and matters of public introduced interests were introduced in response to community pressure. History. Early prosecutions. Early pro prosecutions for sedition in Australia include the convictions of Hen Henry Skierkamp for seditious libel over the Yuka Rebellion. He was a journalist, owner, editor of the Ballarat Times. Um, conviction of 13 trade unionist leaders of the 1891 Australian Shearer Strike for sedition and conspiracy. And the action against radical Harry Holland Jailed for two years in 1909 over his advocacy for a violent revolution during the Broken Hill Minor Strike. During the First World War, sedition laws were used against those who opposed conscription and war, in particular the industrial workers of the world in Australia. In 1916, members of the IAWW in Perth were charged with sedition, including 83-year-old Montag Miller, Known as the Grand Old Man of the Labour Movement, Miller was released after serving a few weeks of his sentence but re-arrested in 1917 in Sydney at the age of 84 and sentenced to six months jail with hard labour at Long Bay Goal on the charge of belonging to an unlawful association. The Sydney 12 were all charged and convicted with various offences including sedition. Lance Sharkley, the Gen Secretary General of the Party of Australia, was charged that in March 1949, he uttered the following seditious words. If forces in pursuit of aggressors entered Australia, Australian workers would welcome them. Australian workers would welcome The last prosecution was in 1960 when the Department of Native Affairs officer Brian Cooper was prosecuted for using the natives of Papua New Guinea to demand independence from Australia. He was convicted and committed suicide four years later after losing his appeal. Recent cases. The Australian government in 2006 investigated books found in Lakimba and Auburn in Sydney promoting the anti-Australian conspiracies and racism but the AFP found in 2006 they did not breach the Criminal Code or New South Wales Crimes Act. Previous law, the colonial legislation for example in Queensland Criminal Code 1899 first established sedition in Australia law. The federal period offence of sedition was created in Federal Crimes Act 1914. Seditious intent Intention. Sedition, 24, defined as seditious intention as a noun intention to affect any of the following purposes. To bring the sovereign into hatred or contempt, to excise disaffection against the government or constitution of the Commonwealth or against either House of the Parliament of the Commonwealth, to excite Her Majesty's subjects to attempt to procure the altercation otherwise by lawful than lawful means, or any matter in the Commonwealth established by law or the Commonwealth or to promote feelings of ill will and hostility different between different cause, castes of Her Majesty's subject so as to endanger the peace, order and good governance of the Commonwealth. Seditious Enterprises Section 24B defined as a seditious enterprise as an enterprise undertaken in order to carry out seditious intention and in section 24c specified that a person who engages in seditious enterprise with the intention of causing violence or creating public disorder or a public disturbance is guilty of an indictable offence punishable by conviction by imprisonment for not longer than three years although section 24d2 provided that a person cannot be convicted of any of the offence defined in section 24c or this section upon the uncorroborated terrorist testimony of one witness. Sedition words, section 24b defines seditious words as words expressed of a seditious intention and section 24d1 specified that any person who, with the intention of causing violence or creating public disorder or a public dispersion, writes, prints, utters or publishes any seditious words shall be guilty of an indictable offence publishable by the imprisonment for three years. Summary prosecution, section 24e allowed that while an accused person might elect 
to be committed for trial, sedition, the consent of the Attorney General be prosecuted summarily, in which the case, the applicable penalty would be imprisonment for a period not exceeding 12 months. Good faith, section 24F, specified that nothing in the preceding provisions made it unlawful. A. To endeavour in good faith to show that the Sovereign, the Governor General, the Governor of the State, the Minister of a Territory or the advisors of any of them or persons responsible for the government of another country has or has been or are mistaken in any of the councils, policies or actions. B. To point out in good faith errors or defects in the government, the constitution, the legislation or the administration or the justice of the Commonwealth or State, a Territory or another country with the view to the reformation of those errors or defuncts. C. To excite in good faith another person to attempt to procure by lawful means the alteration of any matter established by law in the Commonwealth, a state, a territory, or another country. D. To point out in good faith in order to bring about their removal any matters that are procuring or have a tendency to procure feelings of ill will, hostility between different classes of persons. Or D. E. Do anything in good faith in connection with the industrial dispute or industrial matter. In considering a good faith defence, it was specifically noted that the court might consider whether a case involved in the safety or the defence of the Commonwealth and assistance to countries or organisations at war with countries or its allies or to enemies of its allies, whether or not they are enemies of Australia, traitors, saboteurs or the intention of causing violence and creating public disorder or public disturbance unlawful organisations. Section 30A declared that any body of persons incorporated or unincorporated or any breach of committee or unlawful association or any institution or school conducted by or under the authority of apparent authority of the unlawful association by which its constitutional propaganda or otherwise advocates encourages or which is purports to be affiliated with any organisation which advocates or encourages sabotage damage to property used in cross-border trade, commerce, revolution or war against either civilised country or organised government or the doing of any act having or purposely to have as an object of carrying out the seditious intention was the unlawful association for the process of the act. The act went on to criminalise members deemed in absence of evidence to the contrary to include attendees at the meeting, those speaking in public in advocacy for the association or its objects of distributing literature, officers, representatives and teachers and any institution or school conduct or by or under the authority or apparent authority or unlawful association as well as persons printing, selling material produced by or intentionally permitting a meeting in their premises such a association. The Howard Era Laws, Section 7 of the Anti-Bill Number 2, 2005, passed by the Upper House on 60 December 2005, repelled Sections 24A, 24E of the Crimes Act 1914 and reintroduced them, along with several new classes of the offence in Division 80, Treason and Sedition. Crimes of this division now attract the maximum penalty of seven years imprisonment. Seditious Intention The def definition of seditious intention originally in Section 24A has become as amended. An intention to bring the sovereign into hatred or contempt, the urge dis dissatisfaction against the following, the constitution, the government of the Commonwealth, either house of the parliament, to urge other person to attempt otherwise by lawful means to procure a change to any ma matter established by law in the Commonwealth, D to promote feelings of ill will or hostility between different groups so as to threaten the peace, order and goodwill of the Commonwealth. Subdivision uh, sedition Subdivision 80.2 of the proposed legislation as amended specifically criminalises urging the overthrow of the constitutional government. A person who commits an offence, if the person urges another person to overthrow by force or violence the constitution or the government of the Commonwealth, a state or a territory, or the unlawful authority of the government of, or the lawful authority of the government of the Commonwealth. Similarly, it introduces the offence of urging another person to interfere by force or violence with lawful processes for an election of a member or members of a House of Parliament and urging violence within the community. We've heard a couple of high-profile members saying they want to hang people and you don't do that, man. Not a year. Okay, A, the person urges a group or groups, whether distinguished by race, religion, nationality or political opinion, to use force or violence against another group or other groups so it's distinguished, and B, use the force or violence 
force or violence would threaten the peace, order and goodwill of the Commonwealth. Additionally, it's now specifically illegal to urge a person to assist the end. A. A person urges another person to engage in contact and B. The first mentioned person intends to conduct to assist by any means whatsoever an organisation or a country and C. The organisation or country is at war with the Commonwealth. Whether or not the existence of the state of war has been declared and specified by the proclamation made for the purpose of paragraph 80.1 E to be an enemy at war with the Commonwealth or to urge a person to assist those engaged in armed hostilities a. The person urges another person to engage in conduct and B. The first mentioned person attends the conduct to assist by any means whatsoever an organisation or a country and C. The organisation or country is engaged in armed hostilities against the stray force except where such urgings are a way of for the purpose of a provision of aid of a humanitarian nature. These new crimes are punishable by seven years imprisonment. Good faith. New legislation in subsection 80.3 defense for the acts done in good faith updates the circumstances for good faith exemption in, fem f in fashion similar to the definition of seditious intention above. Extraordinary. The new law specifies under section 80.4 Extended geographical jurisdiction for offences that section 15.4, extended geographical jurisdiction category D, applies to an offence against this division. Originally introduced into Australian law as a consequence of Australia's acceptance into International Criminal Court, section 15.4 of the Criminal Code Act 1995, provides that offences under category D apply a whether or not the conduct constituting the alleged offence occurs in Australia and b whether or not a result of the conduct constituting in the alleged offences occurs in Australia. Category D, initially applicable to only such crimes as genocide and crimes against humanity, specifically omits provisions restricting its scope to Australian citizens and therefore applies to any person in any country giving Australia universal jurisdiction over a crime of sedition. Amendments. The following amendments were introduced in the bill prior to the passage. 68, Schedule 7. Uh, after intention to use force or violence, uh, to see amendments. Penalties and scopes. The new laws. The new laws more than double the maximum penalty for sedition from three years imprisonment to seven and allow certain convictions relating to the use of force or violence on the basis of recklessness rather than proven intent. However, the amended laws no longer include specific penalties for uttering seditious words nor provisions relating to seditious enterprises, although the definition of seditious intent continues to apply to the term termination of unlawful organisations. Additionally, all prosecutions for this sedition no longer just summary prosecution now require the approval of the Attorney General, although this does not apply to arrest. Implications. The principal changes to sedition law in the proposed bill seem to involve the inclusion of sedition along with separate crime of treason under the new joint heading, an increase in the maximum penalties from three to seven years, the introduction of concept of recklessness, the inability of seditious intention to individuals not associated with an unlawful organisation, and its extension to foreign citizens. Perhaps most importantly, the modernisation of the laws seem to indicate that the government, apparently in the expectation of an increase in seditious activity, now intends to actively enforce laws which had been allowed to fall into disuse. So the anti-bill, Number two, 2005, included provisions for a five-year review and has a 10-year sunset clause. In addition, the Coalition Backbench Committee, in response to a significant public outcry about the potential for new legislation to strive free speech and dispute, despite the government's claim about a new and imminent threat necessitating the passage of both these houses for the limited and specific anti-bill, successfully lobbied the government to introduce an earlier review of the sedition provisions and accept certain minor amendments. We don't have free speech in Australia. There's nothing in our constitution that gives you free speech. The only thing that gives you free speech in Australia is the Human Rights Declaration, Section 13 of the Human Rights Declaration and uh, Section 61 of the Magna Carta the, and the Bill of Rights. They are they, the only things that give you your right to freedom of speech. There is nothing in the Australian Constitution. So the ALR review in December 2005, the Attorney General Philip Ruddock foreshadowed an independent review of amended sedition laws and provided the Australian Law Reform Commission with formal terms of reference for the purpose on 
2nd of March 2006, in particular the AR, ALRC has been asked to examine whether the amendments, including the sedition offence and defences in section 80.2 and 80.3 of the Criminal Code, effectively address the problem of urging the use of force or violence, whether sedition is the appropriate term to identify this conduct, whether Part A, Part 2A of the Crimes Act, as amended, is effective to address the problem of organisations that advocate to encourage the use of force or violence to achieve political objectives and any related matter. In carrying out its review, the ALRC will have particular regard to the circumstance in which individuals or organisations intentionally urge others to use force or violence against any group within the community, against Australians overseas, against Australian forces overseas, or in support of an enemy at war within Australia, and the practical difficulties involved in providing specific intention to urge violence or acts of in. On the 20th of March 2006, the ALRC committed to consulting as widely as possible within the short time frame provided, released issues paper, open submissions and until the 10th of April 20, 2006 to feed the drafting of the discussion paper, including legislative options and the final report with recommendations for tailoring to the Attorney General. In May 2006, the paper was released. Response to public submissions to the inquiry was closed on the 3rd of July. Opposition to the provisions, despite almost unconditional support for the remainder of the... By mid-November, the main opposition in the Australian Labor Party, including two premiers involved in the original COAG meeting, had joined several prominent coalition backbenchers in calling for the removal of the bill's sedition provisions and committed itself in their repeal in the event it gained government. Repeal, the government attempts, accepted the recommendations of the ALRC report Fighting Words, a review for the sedition law in Australia, which included removing the term sedition and replacing it with the phase urging violence and clarifying the modernist elements of the offences. The term sedition was removed from the National Security Legislation Amendment Bill 2010. Incitement. At common law, it is unlawful to incite a crime. Additionally, the Criminal Code Act 1995 specifically details the crimes of incitement and conspiracy making an offence to incite, urge, aid or encourage or print, publish any writing which incites to, urges, aids or encourages the commission of offence against any federal or territory law or carry on any operation for or by the commission of such offences. Incitement or conspiracy to commit an act of sedition would therefore be punishable by a crime, although incitement to incite sedition is specifically not a criminal act under the code. Do you get where I'm going with this, everyone? I wouldn't be at Canberra, guys, really. Here's one example of how they go after people. Um, a bloke sent a letter complaining about a portrait about the PM, and his two senior ministers were on display at a regional art gallery. Uh, being labelled treasonous. I'll leave this in the description. So it was a report that was done table 13th of December 2006. Historically, sedition law has been used to suppress political dissent, punishing speech that is critical of the established order. Stakeholders, including politicians across party lines, express concerns that sedition law was introduced by the Act, targeted actively. Um, had the potential to inhabit freedom of expression and free association. And that Wikipedia article is just basically copied off the Parliament uh, Department website. Mm -hmm.